Right, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back. Welcome back, right? You may be watching this video, Q&A part one and part two, um, some distance apart. Obviously, I've literally just hit, hit stop on part one and just recorded, hit record for part two again. Um, so, as I said, um, going to keep on answering your questions. If you have missed part one, I will um, actually leave a link in the description below because uh, obviously I've answered the first half of your guys' questions and obviously moving on to part two. Um, because there's actually more questions um, than I thought there was going to be, which obviously uh, I want to say thank you for. And so, like I said, it makes sense to kind of condense it into two shorter videos as opposed to one really long video um, so you don't fall asleep whilst listening to me. <laughs> right. So, um, with that said, um, next question. Next question here by um, from Lewis. Um, what are the main differences you've seen from now? Um, so, let me rephrase that. What are the main differences you've seen from mainly focus on calisthenics to now? Does your routine still incorporate a lot of calisthenics? What's your advice for staying positive with training, even if you had a bad day at work? Oh, so quite a few questions here, but good questions, which um, I'm excited to answer, All right? So um, what are the main differences you've seen from now, focus on calisthenics to now? So um, I'd say the first part of that is that I'm still obviously doing body exercises in my, in my workouts, obviously follow me on Instagram, follow my IG stories. Um, I do a hybrid of, you know, there's pretty much a bit of everything in my routine. Some barbell work, some dumbbell work, um, some body weight work, weighted body weight, kettlebells. Um, really, as I said, um, really helping with my strength, my mobility, flexibility, mobility, conditioning. It's probably the best I've felt and looked, like all round in terms of like strength, at, strength and muscle mass definition, mobility and leanness as well. Um, and so, like I said, I'm doing a hybrid of it all. Um, and I found like this is why for me, obviously, I rebranded from JG Calisthenics to just my name, JG, and obviously me doing fitness, JG Fitness, right? Um, because I, I felt like my progress was being limited by just doing calisthenics. And I felt that like I was limiting myself to calisthenics because my brand, my name on social media and my business was, was under calisthenics, right? Um, and so with that in mind, um, that's where I felt like I knew I was going to get more results, more strength, more muscle mass, um, and also injury risk prevention as well, um, from doing a hybrid of training, um, like using all, like using all styles of training in their, in their best format. Um, so with that said, obviously doing weighted work in the right way has actually improved my body weight strength. Um, and that's why that's the notice. That's the difference I've seen. Um, obviously having body weight work and also weighted work, you get that that blend of like strength gain, muscle mass, um, mobility and flexibility, and leanness and definition as well, which is what everyone wants. Um, a lot of people, um, not just watching my videos, but in general, like more so gravitate towards like that lean, muscular, and athletic looking body, uh, because obviously you know we want to do day to day life stuff, we want to have a social life, and we want to play sports. Um, and so, with that said, having like a strong body that's lean and functional um, is obviously to kind of like body that most people gravitate towards and that's like the style of training I do that best fits my needs that I can also um, carry over to clients as well. Um, so those are the differences I've seen. Um, as I said, I still do calisthenics. It's more so basic body weight stuff. I don't do advanced progressions and that because I just, I've, I've done what I've, I've, I've achieved what I wanted to do with advanced calisthenics. As I said, once I was doing a handstand for like 30 seconds, um, obviously for most people, the next step is a one arm, a one arm handstand or a handstand push up and I just didn't really want to do that. Um, you know, I just like to focus on efficiency of my training, getting the most bang for my buck, um, achieving the best results in the shortest time possible. Um, and so that's why, like, you know, in some cases, body weight wins in that case, like, you know, pull ups, etc. But sometimes weighted work wins as well. So that's why I do both. Um, and um, so, yeah, it's basic, like, instead of like, instead of going from like a pull up to like all different variations, I just add weight to myself. Instead of doing fat, like a load of fancy dips, I just do weighted dips, <laughs> right? Um, and yeah, um, either like just efficiency, right? Um, and what's your advice for staying positive for training, even if you've had a bad day at work? So I think the biggest thing with like fitness and like the self development space, as as you can see with like all the books I've read in the background, um, a lot of people preach about positivity, which is obviously important. Like we also want to keep a positive mindset, but you got to realize like. The reality of life is that life is hard and life is challenging, <laughs> right? And the gym is a valuable teacher of that because if you realize in the gym, like as you get stronger, you build muscle, you lose fat, 
and your physique transforms is that the gym's always still hard, right? Because it never actually gets easier, you get stronger, right? Just like a video game. Can you imagine if like you're playing a video game and every time you level up, it's, it, it doesn't get harder. It would be so boring, right? Without any challenges, there's no growth, right? Um, so it's just accepting, man, that like the best way to stay positive is to realize that you're not always gonna feel positive. Sometimes you're gonna feel shit. Sometimes you're gonna feel crap. Sometimes you're not really gonna feel like doing much. So you gotta think of it like, Think of it, this is one thing I say to clients, right? It's like, you gotta think of it like a car with your gears. Um, your car may go up to six gears. Um, my car, Sally Skoda, she goes up to five gears. Um, so some days like you may be cruising, you may be feeling like you can fly and take on the world. So going fifth gear and cruising is like the good way to tackle that day. If you feel unwell, you feel sick or whatever, it doesn't make sense to try and go fifth gear when you don't really feel like that, right? Sometimes, actually going third gear, second gear, or first gear is actually gonna get you further than fifth gear. If you're driving uphill, right, you're gonna get uphill, you're gonna get up the hill much faster without, without messing up your car in first gear or second gear, right, compared to trying to ram up in fifth gear, right? Um, there's also a quote I love um, from Martin Luther King. He said, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. And if you can't walk, crawl. But whatever you do, you've gotta keep moving forward. So the reality is, is that some days you're not always gonna feel like flying, running, or even walking. Some days you gotta just crawl. But if you're crawling, you're gonna get further than not doing anything. Um, so as I said, it goes back to part one of why uh, the question I got of like, how do I stay motivated? Um, or how do you stay motivated? Um, it's getting clear on your goals, your why, like what you want, how you're gonna get there, and why it's important to you. And that your goals, man, will just pull you, right? They'll just pull you. Um, I said about writing down on pen and paper, you can even also create your own vision board, that's great as well. Um, and with that said, man, it's like, even on days that don't feel too great, um, if you know you've done the best you can, the best you can to achieve your goals, you're still getting the positive out of it. Um, and the more you can accomplish for yourself with your goals, your health and fitness goals, your personal goals, etc. cetera, um, if you can show up for yourself on the bad days, um, one, that's gonna help you show up for yourself even better on the good days, but it's even gonna remind yourself that days where you don't feel too great, you're gonna think to yourself like, you know, I've dealt with like a lot more shit in the past than this, um, so I'm gonna keep moving forward. It's like, it's almost like a blessing in disguise having a lot of my gut issues last year, uh, because some of the things that I can sometimes complain about now feels like a warm up compared to the amount of adversity I faced last year. <laughs> so having that experience, it's like, well, if I can go through some of the stuff I went through last year, like what I'm going through right now, or what's in front of me right now is like a warm up, right? Um, so that's the way you gotta see it, man. Um, and um, the, the gym, as I said, when you think of like the physical benefits and the mental benefits, physical exercise and strength training provides, obviously the endorphins, the adrenaline, the feel good hormones, every day you work out, man, it's always a better day. I can tell you that for me, every day I work out, it's always a better day. So you've got to think to yourself, like you may not feel like great initially, but you're always going to feel better after crushing a workout. Um, and it's just like life is seasons, life is, life is waves. It's like we can't, we can't like, if we're on like a ship or a boat and there's a storm, it's like, imagine if you try and adjust the waves, man, you're just going to tip over, right? Um, but if you adjust your sails, you're going to keep moving forward, right? You're going to keep moving forward. So can't adjust the waves, but we can adjust the sails. Um, or we can't control we can't control the waves, but we can adjust the sails. So when you approach when you approach it like that, man, just taking perfect action, done beats perfection. Um, and you have that imperfect mentality, man. Um, you end up accomplishing a lot more than just staying in procrastination or thinking of perfect thoughts, because life is very imperfect when we think about it, right? Um, and as I said, the gym will serve you massively of keeping a positive mindset and just keep it moving forward with your health and fitness goals and all areas of life as well, man. Um, so next question, next question. Jordy asks, what's a common mistake people make that stops them from achieving their goals? I honestly say it falls into what I said of not knowing what their goals are. Um, as I said, usually when we, fall tr when, like, when we fall off track with our goals because of a lack of motivation, it, becomes, it comes from a lack of clarity. If you know what you want, how you're gonna get there and why you wanna achieve it, you naturally know what you don't need to do, <laughs> right? You naturally know what you need to avoid. <laughs> um, it's like, if you, if you like a simple lifestyle habit could be like, I wanna get seven to eight hours of sleep a night. Everyone knows they shouldn't be on their phone now before bed, right? So when you have the goal of like, I'm gonna sleep seven to eight hours a night, a night 
you don't even need to think, oh, I need to be off my phone out before bed. You just do it, <laughs> right? Um, so I think it goes back to the goal set of what I said in Q&A part one, which again is in the previous video, which I'll link in the description. Um, like if you if you know what your goals are, how you're gonna get there and why you wanna achieve it, you're, you're naturally going to avoid the, self -sabota the self-sabotaging habits that can make you move backwards rather than forwards, right? Because you've got the right goals, it's always gonna pull you forward. Um, so you can so you can get out your own way, you know what I'm saying? Um, and next question as well. Um, I'd say as well, like a, another, like adding to that as well, a mistake people can make is also a lack of accountability. Um, so always having a supportive inner circle, whether it's friends, family, coaches, mentors, even inspirational people online, having a supportive network and people that actually help you level up um, they'll keep on pushing you forward. Whereas like for me in the past where I felt quite lonely and isolated from like blocking myself out from the world, um, that's actually stopped me from achieving my goals. Um, because like when you, like for me, when I spend too much time by myself, like I can like get my own way and create self-sabotaging thoughts and habits that make me just like be like, you know, it gives me like a validation to not work towards my goals. Whereas when you're with when you've got coaches, mentors, friends, supportive family members, like they will push you towards your goals. You see what I'm saying? Um, so as well as the goals, I think having accountability um, internally with yourself as well as externally for other people is a massive one as well. Because if you're your own greatest supporter and you've got supportive people around you, um, you will move yourself forwards and the people around you will move you forwards as well. Um, and uh, next question, what are the exercise you include in your routine in order to improve, maintain mobility in your joints? Um, so a lot of my mobility comes from my strength exercises. Um, so again, it's focusing on exercise to give me the best bang for my buck. So when you think of the likes of like pull-ups and push-ups, for example, they naturally improve your shoulder mobility simultaneously. Um, it's like with lower body, if you're doing squats, lunges, um, glute ham raises, um, Romanian deadlifts, like they're naturally improving your hip mobility at the same time. Um, so actually in increasing, improving your mobility through strength training is like the most permanent way of like maintaining good mobility um, because it's the strength that makes the mobility more long lasting. Um, whereas like if you only just do stretching, it's going to be more temporary. You see what I'm saying? Um, next question, thoughts on using body weight sports like rock climbing to recomp. So recomp, obviously body recomposition, building muscle, losing fat simultaneously, almost like um, trying to fix skinny fat that comes through a body recomp. Um, such as my recomp 12 week coaching, right? Um, so in answer to your question, um, I mean, like I said, man, like rock climbing can get you jacked, man. <laughs> like I've seen some people with the most almighty wrists, forearms, grip strength and back strength from rock climbing, right? Um, I think rock climbing alone probably won't get you the exact results you're looking for. Um, but it, it can definitely help. Like if you enjoy rock climbing, you can do it, man. And then just using the right um, routine, that's gonna help you recover, build muscle and lose fat. So your your fitness goals and your rock climbing goals like complement one another rather than getting in the way of one another will help massively. Um, I'm trying to think like um, in terms of uh, calisthenics, like um, there's a book, I've got it over there, I haven't got it over there because the book's too big to fit on that shelf, but um, Overcoming Gravity um, by Stephen Lowe is a great book. Um, he does a lot of um, rock climbing himself, I'm pretty sure, and he's got um, a really strong weight to pull up. Um, and he, in that book, he refers a lot to like, um, not just like progressing with your goals from like just a general calisthenics perspective, but also if you've got sport performance goals as well, um, it covers a lot of good stuff there. Um, because obviously, um, if you've got recovery from sports like rock climbing, you've got to obviously manage in recovery from your strength workouts um, as well. So I'm just trying to look here of the next part. So question here, travel plans, travel plans. Oh, that's a good one, right? Um, it's actually funny. Um, literally, if you look in the background, obviously you've got the Santa Monica Pier there um, in LA. Um, and um, with that said, I was actually planning to go to LA. Um, we're in 2022 right now in 2020, but then COVID hit, um, which was really disappointing because I know a lot of people in LA from calisthenics, um, networking, and also um, a lot of clients I've worked with and work with now live in LA. Um, so yeah, that kind of ruined my plans. And then um, 2021, obviously I had a lot of my gut issues. Um, so now it's like, honestly, it's like, I'm just like, I just overthink things, man. And I'm very indecisive where it's like, I can look at so many places to travel, like, 
I can't pick one. You know, like where do I start? So as I said, LA is definitely a place um, I say I want to, I'm going to um, visit. Um, but if you've got any suggestions yourself, comment them in the comment section below and um, I'd love to know where I can travel, right? Next question here. James says, hey Jake, how would you recommend progressing unweighted training? I'm on the skinny side of skinny fat. Just have access to gymnastic rings at least for the next year. What sort of programming would you recommend for muscle gains? Um, so first of all, I've got a full playlist on how to fix skinny fat in full um, on this YouTube channel, which I'll link in the description below. Um, I even put a card up here. Um, and oh, something weird on my screen just came there, but no, we're all good. Um, so I think one of the biggest things with skinny fat, right? Like we know the like whether your main goal is skinny fat is building muscle or losing fat. The main way you're gonna get rid of skinny fat is increasing muscle mass um, to actually overall reduce your body um, fat percentage and improve your body composition, right? Muscle mass is what ultimately transforms your body in the most significant way. Um, and I would say with just doing bodyweight training, um, it's probably only going to get you so far. Um, bodyweight exercises are naturally harder to progress, um, especially when it comes to like efficiency of muscle mass. Um, so you can do basic bodyweight work, bodyweight ring work. Um, you can even get yourself a weighted vest. So it's efficiency in overloading like your push-ups, rows, pull-ups and dips rather than just doing a lot of variations which improve overall neurological strength um, but won't have as much like physiological additional physiological demands that increases muscle mass and strength as efficiently compared to just free weights, right? Um, and I would say if you've got access to gymnastic rings, um, get yourself um, some um, adjustable dumbbells. Um, you can do obviously some, like you can do um, dumbbell work for your upper body, accessory work, bicep curls, tricep extensions. Again, you can do it with rings, but it's gonna be easy to overload with um, dumbbells because you can purely isolate the muscles and legs as well, because obviously with body weight, when you get more advanced, um, body weight can become more limiting for legs where you just gotta add weight. Um, so my best advice as I said is, like you can do your body weight exercise, but I would incorporate free weights, um, because as I said, once, when I transition from mainly focusing on, like when I, when, when, can't give my words out, can't give my words out, when I transition from mainly coaching calisthenics to actually helping people with um, fixing skinny fat, um, like that's why like I've always said to all of them like of actually incorporating free weights, um, even if their goals are calisthenics, um, because that is gonna help with their strength gain and muscle mass most efficiently. Um, so I would definitely um, incorporate some free weights into your routine. And again, if you'd like some support with that, I've got, as I said, a skinny fat playlist um, in the description. I've even got my own free um, skinny fat PDF guide, uh, which again, just message me, message me skinny fat on um, Instagram or Facebook and I'll send you the PDF there. And again, I've also got my one-on-one -on -one coaching um, and trimming jake programs below available for you to take the guesswork out for you and help you um, fix skinny fat and transform your body in the most efficient and effective way, right? Um, next question, John says, hey Jake, have you unlocked any new skills and what does your training look like? So, um, I don't, f I f I'm not sure if I answered this at the start of part two of this Q&A, or if I answered it at the end of part one. I answered it either way. So again, the timestamps will be in the description below of answering each question. So you can refer to this one. And if you can't see it here, then it will be in part one. But as I said, um, I don't focus on skill training anymore. Um, I felt like, as I said, like I, I began to achieve the goals I wanted to achieve and uh, with calisthenics. And I began to realize like, do I, do I really want to, or do I really need like a full planche, a handstand push up and one arm chin up? Um, it just it just stopped ex like exciting me as much. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, in answer to that, no. <laughs> right. Um, I've just focused on getting stronger with just basic body weight progressions, um, and free weight work. As I said, just efficiency, strength gain, muscle mass. Um, as I said, um, you know, before calisthenics, I felt like it like a lot of the advanced skills kind of took over my life. Um, like you know, I didn't. Um, go out and socialize because I was like, oh, I'm doing plants training the next day, so I can't have alcohol, I can't have a burger, right? Um, and that that led to a lot of um, you know anxiety and also um, mental mental health issues where I just isolated myself from the world because I was so focused on calisthenic skills that, to be honest, no one really cared about but myself, and even I didn't really care that much about it, <laughs> right? Um, but that that's just me. Um, so that's why I focus more on the lifestyle approach, focus on efficiency of training, and as a result. I train like half the amount of time right now, as I said, full body three times a week. Um, and I'm achieving way more results in like all, all around health and fitness and actually having a social life as well and enjoying myself, which is very important um, because there's no point, or to me, as I said, I, I, get, I felt a sense of emptiness from looking great, my shirt off, being really strong in calisthenic skills, but then like 
holding myself back from actually enjoying the finer things in life, which we all actually want more of, right? Because the gym and working out should only be a part of our life rather than our whole life, right? Um, David asks, I'm 58. Um, I lift and walk six days a week. Good man, right? That's solid. I would love to achieve some gymnastic strength moves like planche or ring work. Am I too old to attempt these skills? Is the injury risk um, high for my age? Um, I like I've seen people of like in their seventies, um, oh, ripped, jacked, right, doing like um, pull ups and dips in the park and all of that. Um, I would say like it's a bit like anything. Um, the biggest thing you got to consider um, when you're someone who's taken more laps around the sun, um, more experienced, um, you've got to take more consideration into the recovery of your joints, your tendons and ligaments. Um, like obviously you said you're fifty eight now, and understandably some things that you may do at 58 you may not be able to get away with when you're 18 right that's perfectly understandable that's perfectly fine um i mean the biggest thing i focus on if you're doing gymnastic work um is just focus on basics um getting your basic push-up strength weight push-ups um pull-ups rows dip strength up and then before doing a lot of like the heavy lockout work that puts a lot of stress on your tendons your ligaments and your bicep tendon um you want to do the progressions that don't require the full lockout right so I've heard people like, you know, have a lot of like bicep and, and elbow issues going straight into like rings turned out dips before actually learning proper dip, let alone a basic push up. Um, so like, for example, like a, like the um, push up, like ring push ups and ring dips, I would do the basic ones first before doing like the rings turned out. Um, Cause again, the basic progression will help build up the tendon strength in your biceps and elbows to be able to withstand the rings turned out variation and the rings turned out will progress from there. Um, I think in terms of pulling exercises, I think the only one I'd be cautious of um, to begin with is the back lever because that requires like an immense shoulder flexibility, shoulder, shoulder extension and straight arm conditioning your bicep tendon, which again, if you just go straight to it, um, can lead to some injuries. Um, so um, I think one thing as well, like um, my friend um, Matt Shifley from Red Delta Project, um, again, I've been on some... Um, some of his podcasts, which is awesome. Um, he um, does great content for fitness for people in their 40s and 50s. I can link his channel um, below. Chances are, if you're following my stuff about calisthenics, you've probably heard of Matt. Um, and so, yeah, he does great stuff with that as well. Um, question here, how to stop being dogmatic regarding training? You've got to ask yourself, man, what's more important to you? Like subject subjective opinions or results, right? We all want results. So if you want results, you do, you use the training style that's going to achieve the result you want in the most efficient way as to being like, oh, like I've only got to do calisthenics because I did that myself before and it led to frustrating injuries, frustrating imbalances and just overall lack of progress and frustration from not just thinking like, well, I can actually use free weights, right? Like, you know, like nothing bad's going to happen. Like, you know, actually having a wide variety of training, like you got to think the function of the human body, right? You know, push, pull, carry, squat, lunge, hinge. Um, if you really want the most versatile body in terms of strength, mobility, stre strength gain, muscle mass, confidence, looking and feeling awesome, you need a, what you need. You can't just rely on one style of training, man, because one style of training isn't going to get you all of them, right? Um, that's why I have, obviously, body weight work, weight, body weight, um, kettlebells, barbell, dumbbells, because I know if I only did one, one or two of them, like I'm missing the benefits of all the other styles of training. Whereas if you blend them all together, you get the benefits of them all, of course, if you know how to do them correctly, right? Um, and that answers that answers all the questions. So we're on 24 minutes, 38 seconds right here. So it's not going to cut me off at 30 minutes. So with that said, whew, that's Q&A wrapped up. That was actually really good. Come on, I'm, I'm sweating literally. Right, I've got this ring light beaming in my in my face and my skull right now. Um, and this has been good fun, right? It's been good fun. So if you have enjoyed this Q and A, both part one and part two, drop me a thumbs up. Um, drop this video a thumbs up. Comment below um, what you enjoyed most from this video and um, what you gained most value from, what your biggest takeaway was. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Right, share this with with a friend or friends you feel would benefit um, from this Q&A series, right? And um, yeah, like I said, um, I do, um, as I said, I'm not just gonna say it as an intention, like obviously I will be posting on YouTube more. Um, as I said, um, obviously I am um, active every day on Instagram, Facebook, also posting on TikTok as well, which are all linked in the description below. But now I wanna be everywhere, right? Because obviously now, like, you know, um, overcome my gut issues, obviously got more time, more energy, all that good stuff. 
Um, so obviously I can now actually, you know, do the things I want to do, um, both with social media, business, clients, my own goals, personal life, social life, all that good stuff, um, which is all good in the hood, right? So like I said, um, hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, video. I don't know how to wrap this video up now. Are you, I remember doing a lot of YouTube videos in the past. I was really bad at wrapping videos up. I don't know where to go. Um, but yeah, been awesome speaking to you guys. Appreciate you all. Um, as I said, if you want to um, connect with me personally, Instagram, Facebook, as I said, there every day. Drop me a message, say what's up. Um, as I said, love to interact with all you guys. And um, yeah, let's just wrap the video up right now. Right? Let me know in the comments below what videos you want to see next, and I'll be sure to cover them for you. Um, and I'll speak to you guys soon. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Have an awesome weekend. Um, whatever day in the week you're watching this, but I'm rambling at the minute. I don't know where to go. And I think if I don't know where to go, I think I need to stop recording right now and just edit the video and post it on YouTube because done beats perfection, right? So catch you all soon. Appreciate you all.